So welcome everybody um, to this OpenShift Commons briefing. Today we're really pleased to have the crew from GetUp Cloud down in Brazil who've been who back in November of 2012 launched a public pause uh, for the Brazilian market using OpenShift V2, or maybe it was even V1 back then. I don't know. You guys were very daring, um, and you've been with us from the very beginning. And now today they're going to be talking about their journey from um, V2 to V3 on from Azure onto Azure from AWS, and some of the lessons that they've learned and some of um, the new features they're taking advantage of. So I'm going to get out of the way and let um, the, the GetUp Cloud guys talk for 20 to 30 minutes. And then we're going to have a Q&A session. And we're very pleased to have some of the members of the Microsoft Azure team with us and a few of the folks from Ceph, because you'll hear today a little bit about how GetUp Cloud is using Ceph, Ceph storage um, for this deployment on Azure. And so there's lots of interesting things to, to talk about today. Um, so the Q&A, um, post your questions into the chat. We're gonna try and hold the questions until after the presentation, and then we will go as long as it takes to answer all your questions today. So without further ado, I'm gonna welcome Diogo uh, from GetUp Cloud, and I'll let him introduce himself and his team. Thanks, Diane. Hello, everyone. My name is Jogo. I am the CEO of GetUp Cloud, and uh, it's a great it's great to be here today. Talk a, li a little about uh, GetUp and what we, we we are doing here in Brazil. Uh, I'll start. Uh, I must confess that I did see this coming. Uh, I did not imagine that we would be talking about deploying an open source project using Microsoft technology, and I think this is great. This is a big deal. It's a way good to see uh, companies like Microsoft being more open and join the party. Uh, so Microsoft, welcome and chapeau. Uh, very quickly about us, uh, GetUp is a Brazilian company specializing in platform as a service, founded three years ago by myself, Diego Castro and Mateus Caruso. Uh, Diego, change the slide, please. Okay. Uh, we have a public offer also uh, based on OpenShift Orange. Uh, we do on-premise OpenShift deployments as well as some professional services focused on technical guidance to our customers, mostly help them to understand and embrace serverless architecture. This is new, new for a bunch of people. Uh, so we try to show the way when building cloud native applications. Diego. We chose OpenShift for a, a bunch of good reasons. Uh, we started using AWS and focused on market agencies, running digital campaigns for some big brands. Uh, fast forward, a lot of projects passed by and uh, we started following all the fuss around Docker, Docker containers. Uh, also the evolution in software development and they need for more speed and abstraction when building uh, modern applications. Uh, we have also other trends that you already know. Uh, so last year we decided to make our shift to V3, which seems to have all the answer till now. Uh, the deployment is using Microsoft Azure, which is now our new partner, Diego. So why, why Azure? Yeah. Um, we all know that AWS is the leader uh, in this segment. So why we chose Azure? Well, we, we don't want to be locked with only one vendor. Uh, and uh, as this is a new environment, we saw it as a good opportunity to start a new relationship. Uh, we did a look at Azure and uh, IBM SoftLayer also. Uh, to us, uh, Azure is way ahead of SoftLayer, uh, has a superior service, the UI and API is friendly to use, and also has a lot of services uh, that we can use to extend our offer. Uh, for example, we use a lot of uh, CDN, object storage uh, to build the solutions to, to our customers. Uh, 
Uh, another great adventure, adventure is the fact that we can pay using our local currency uh, with a, fix, a fixed exchange rate, uh, avoiding monetary fluctuation. Uh, we did it test uh, Google because they don't have a Brazilian region, uh, and uh, this is important for latent sensitive application. Yeah. Uh, before Diego go into technical details today uh, of our deployments, uh, I'd like to show two cases running on OpenShift v3 and using our infrastructure in Azure. The first one is Heineken up on the roof. Uh, it is a, a free VIP party uh, at the rooftop of Martinetti's building, which is an iconic skyscraper, skyscraper in Sao Paulo. The application uh, was very simple. They built a web app to give the tickets. Every Monday, exactly 3 p.m. for six weeks in a row, they had opened the list with around 400 tickets per week. Uh, all you had to do to get one is fill a form. Easy, isn't it? <laughs> Not really. Uh, actually, the tickets uh, finished in seconds. Uh, the, the, last, the last week was in, in nine seconds, to be exact. Uh, and every week, the number of people searching for a spot was even higher. This is a classic example where you need to speed. You need speed when scaling reserves. Uh, and the new architecture of V3 made it not only possible, but also simple, because we are, we are working with digital agents here, not tech guys or tech savvy guys. And all they need to do uh, was launch new containers a few minutes before the traffic spike. Diego. Another case that uh, I want to show, it, it is really cool because we all know Netflix. Uh, we all know that uh, uh, TV companies are moving to, to the web. So I, uh, I picked this one because it's a really cool uh, case. It's RBS uh, Octo. Uh, RBS Group is a Brazilian media conglomerate founded in 1957. Uh, they are one, one of they are one of Brazil's largest communication groups. It is also the largest one affiliated with Rede Globo or Global Networks, uh, famous by their uh, soap operas. <laughs> last, year, last year they started the Octo Project, a new TV channel and available only through the web. Uh, the goal was to build the solution using a microservices approach. Uh, and they had only 90, 90 days to, to develop. So DevOps and agile development was crucial in this project because uh, as well the consistency between dev stage and production uh, as the project was evolving. Uh, we, we had no time for, for error. Uh, we worked with the product and development team providing to them uh, technical guidance, helping them with the architecture. Uh, the project was launched in, in time and it is a, su a success inside the company. Uh, it was a, a pilot, probably you, you'll see in the future, uh, near future, more project uh, going forward, uh, going to the web. Uh, now I will pass the presentation to Diego uh, to talk about infrastructure and the technical details. Diego? Okay. Hello, I'm Diego Castro. I'm CTO at GetUp Cloud and I'll make an overview of our OpenShift Azure deployment. So, uh, how we use it, blob storage to start our registry images and what, what they are doing to improve our service. Uh, when I started to look at new service or new service cloud provider uh, I wanted to make sure of three things uh, be easy to deploy auto recovery and reliable uh, as you may know openshift tv3 has a whole new concept of deployment and management and one master and one etcd are the only machines you have to care about backups all of, all of the other can be easily uh, replaced. 
It, this is perfect if you want to use uh, disposable servers. And if a server goes down, just replace it with a new one. And OpenShift takes care of rescheduling pods across the healthy uh, nodes. It's, it works really, really well. And we use Azure uh, Resource Manager templates. Uh, a template is basically a big JSON file which uh, defines what services you want to create and configure. Uh, our deploy or components are isolate, isolated on subnet, subnets of our virtual networks, those three layers you see here, and which are public, private, and SAM. We have security groups attached on subnets instead of network interfaces because uh, we have standardized our deployment and it's easy to manage. We have only four security groups, so it's very simple to manage it. We also use uh, availability sets. This is uh, the Azure concept of redundancy. Um, it works spreading the servers on faulty domains, which are sets of hypervisor hardware, power source, network switch. So it reduces the impact of um, hardware failure or whatever, power outage. And so, so Azure was the best, best fit of what you have been uh, trying to achieve. And at here at the very top, those two points, we have um, traffic manager endpoints, one for the, our API and other for web halting. Uh, this is our first layer of load balancing. Uh, traffic manager, it's a cloud service that has failover and load balancing features. It works by monitoring the endpoints and provides uh, automatic failover when a service goes down. Uh, it's very important to us to keep the service ru running uh, all the time. And Traffic Manager has a critical role on it. It's very easy to set up. It's DNS-based and works really well on OpenShift. Uh, so moving forward, we have here on the public network, we have the jump node, which is used as a SSH uh, gateway to our servers. It's a virtual machine. Uh, OpenShift masters, uh, they are true for failover and load balancer managed by um, traffic manager. And what we call here, router. They are OpenShift nodes running HA proxy router image. And those are the only uh, nodes that has public IPs attached. Uh, we don't use Nati native uh, HA solution based on Pacemaker because uh, it doesn't work on Azure Cloud. We use instead Traffic Manager. And at here, at the private network, we have um, the major part of our services. They are the uh, private network. Uh, ETCD cluster, they are uh, three machines with uh, data disks attached. And we also have uh, OpenShift nodes for compute nodes for our, uh, to host our customers' containers. And we also have um, OpenShift infra nodes. And it's running metrics, uh, Hopular, Hipster, Cassandra, and the logging system, uh, Elasticsearch and Kibana. Uh, on the same network right here, we have a Ceph cluster. This is um, version hammer and uh, it holds the persistent volumes for the pods. So uh, each Ceph OSD 
has four data disks on RAID 10. And performance, it's, it's, performance here is critical. And unfortunately, we don't have uh, SSD disks uh, on Brazil. So we had to tweak the config a little bit to use uh, the local ephemeral disks for journal. And that way, our performance is really good. Um, uh, we don't have, we don't want to uh, databases or or our disks slowing down the whole application. So works very well. And we're looking forward to get the SSS disks on Brazilian region. And well, um, we use Ansible to uh, configure the servers. We use community playbooks and everything we developed was sent back to the upstream. Uh, I recommend you guys doing the same. The community guys are very nice and they have merged all of my pull requests. So to deploy a new server, uh, we start with Azure templates that creates, uh, cloud creates the cloud components, uh, bootstrap the server, installing updates, uh, installing Docker, uh, monitoring agents, and then we run the Ansible playbook to finish the configuration. Uh, we don't have uh, a fully automated deployment yet. This is this is being developed, so we will be able to auto magically uh, deploy and replace servers really uh, without any uh, human intervention. So uh, we don't we don't use golden images uh, since Azure has a kind of um, it, is, it is not a limitation but it's a it's a way to do things that uh, makes harder to use custom images and because of that our deployment might get a little complex so. Uh, we use instead uh, CentOS 7 um, from the marketplace. It's up to date and works very well. We also have um, Azure DNS for our customer's domain. Uh, and each group of servers, they are also resource groups. So we can track costs and have a better organization of the resources. Um, we use uh, blob storage, blob storage to store our registry images and to store our backups. And for monitoring solution, we use New Relic and uh, PagerDuty. So I'm going to pass here. Okay. Uh, one of one of our um, first uh, work to do on Azure was to get the hash history uh, nice and reliable way to store our images. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we, how our hash history was uh, set to work on Azure Cloud. And, it is using uh, blob storage to for image persistence. Uh, as you may know, registry, registry holds all of the private images and needs a lot of lots of disk space. So blob storage was the best choice. Uh, when we first came to Azure. Uh, the OpenShift registry didn't support it, the blob storage. So it was our first contribution to the project. And it, it's really easy to use uh, here in green on the side. It's uh, all you need to enable it. it uh, I didn't put the whole procedure, but it's quite straightforward. Uh, you can check the official docs for customize your registry, but 
what this makes is uh, tell the registry to use um, the Azure Blob Storage module to store the images. And that way you can have uh, HA registry and scalable, no comments here, it works really well. And the only requirement is that the origin has to be at least 112. It was uh, when they get merged to the, to the upstream. And it has been working since, I don't know, a couple, couple months and without any major issue. Uh, works, works, it's very reliable, works really well. And okay, I'll show you here. Okay. Uh, moving forward, we have, um, we're working to enhance our deployment, uh, making them faster and simple. Uh, we will also want to use auto recovery and auto scaling uh, features uh, on the server side because uh, OpenShift takes care of the pods, but you, we still have to take care of your machines, make sure they are up and running and you, you can scale them as fast as you can. So uh, that work is being developed. So uh, Azure already has uh, virtual machine scale sets in preview mode. And as soon as it gets uh, generally available, we're gonna use it for our other scaling um, solution. And we also are looking for uh, multi-region deployment so we can serve customers uh, outside Brazil with uh, low latency. And um, that's it. Um, I'm going to open for the questions. All right, then, um, thanks. Uh, there's, there, you actually have done a very good exp job explaining most of all, all of these things. There was one comment, and I'm just going to turn John Gosman on. John, you're, you're open and you can talk. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to say, uh, first of all, I'm very impressed with uh, how much stuff that you have uh, have, have done and, and how complete this is. Um, the I was going to comment that VM skill sets are uh, actually GA now. Uh, we just GA'd them uh, last week at our build conference. Uh, oh, it, nice. <laughs> um, so we'll have to look at it, though. They don't yet support data disks. Uh, and so you might need that for that, but that's something that'll come quite soon afterwards. But you should certainly start kicking the tires and giving us feedback on that. Cool. Oh, nice. Okay. I'm looking to see if there's any other questions from the audience, because um, I know that you had some, here's something popping in. Um, how are you authenticating developers to the OpenShift console API? And how are you authorizing that access? Okay, uh, we have our own um, authentication backend. It is um, well. Uh, Matheus can explain a little bit about our sure. authentication. Let's see. It's her, it's it's own creation. Uh, hello. <laughs> hello, everyone. I am Matheus Carusio. Uh, I am the developer of Pure Cloud, uh, and we are we are authenticating our users from a Django backend. We rebuilt it from the V2 to V3. Uh, we are now using Django REST framework, and there is this option on the Shift Master configuration file where you can uh, put where is your authentication backend. OpenShift will forward the, the request with user and password, and the Django backend uh, responds with a token that is sent back to the user to make the subsequent calls. Uh, it's pretty simple. It's working very nice with us because we handle the all the we can handle in the central point all uh, the authentication, uh, the billing system, the uh, 
our uh, registry and email validation endpoints. And uh, we already did that in V2, and it was just to adapt one or two things to, to run it under V3. Does it make uh, answer the question? I think that did, and it also showcased um, your use of Django. So uh, I can see where some people are going to be interested in, in doing that, especially myself. That's pretty cool. No. Um, there's one question coming oh, in. How, how do you get the SAN set up on Azure? Is that a VM network? Okay, and the SAN, okay, okay. The SAN, it is a, it is a regular um, subnet from a virtual network. Uh, I call SAN because uh, there is no access to outside the world and just the nodes can access SAN. Um, it's, it's very straightforward. Uh, I have a template, a uh, resource manager template that spin up my uh, Ceph cluster and configure them. So each, each, Ceph, each Ceph node has its own um, set of data disks attached to its own uh, storage account. So I don't get limited by the storage account uh, IOPS or throughput. So uh, it's one uh, it's one node for one um, storage account, and then uh, a set of data disks attached on. Uh, I don't know. Is it clear? Uh, answer your yeah. question. Yeah. I um, just want to get some ideas how you, um, so it sounds to me you are still using the VM level network. Um, uh, so that's correct. So the networking you are not yeah. relying on the host of the hypervisor networks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a v VM network. It's not a, the hypervisor network. Okay, do you, um, do you see any issues? Because of course uh, the network could be saturated. Um, well, to be honest, yes. <laughs> I saw some issues, uh, especially when um, uh, I believe a couple weeks ago there were um, uh, planned maintenance on the Azure network and things get really weird. Uh, Ceph machines couldn't uh, provide I don't know exactly what what was going on, but looks like the uh, the network was flapping. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, Lossing packages and Ceph didn't like of a flapping network. Um, as as the network should be like really really stable to Ceph work well and. I, I realized that when there's some um, Azure maintenance on the system, it, things does, doesn't work really smooth. So uh, we are here with the Azure guys. I'd like to hear of that <laughs> because okay. it's only on the maintenance. It, regular days works really well. Right. Thank you. Um, by the way, do you run any of the workload on what kind of the workload you are running on the staff side? So that's the position, position story. I heard you are running some of the database on the uh, staff uh, position storage. So do you also see any like performance issues? For some people, no, no. no? Okay, that sounds great to me. Right. Okay, I see, I see like, um, MySQL, uh, Postgres, MongoDB, and also uh, regular data disks attached on pods. We we run all, all sorts of uh, workloads, but uh, it, we have to tweak a little bit the Ceph configuration because uh, the the standard disks, the standard um, uh storage accounts doesn't have a really good throughput 
So we had to tweak to use the ephemeral disks on each machine for journal. And mm -hmm. then uh, it, it came up with a really good, uh, really good uh, performance. But uh, I mean, the real, the, the big deal is when uh, SSD disks uh, get arrived in Sao Paulo and it's gonna uh, be way more uh, faster. But a stable is. Right. Yeah, I think so. Thank you for asking my, uh, answering my questions. So there's there's one other question that just came in from Boris. And Boris, if you unmute yourself, you can ask any follow up you'd like. Um, have you explored hooking up Azure AD to OpenShift? And maybe you could explain what Azure AD is to the audience. It's the oh, Azure Active Directory. This is Boris. Um, so this is just a, one of the mechanism of using auth without having to do uh, manage the passwords. So it's just the Azure Active Directory that does manage identity and OpenShift just uses that as a as a means of redirecting requests to Azure AD to get the authentication. Hmm. Okay. I, I have not used uh, Azure AD to authenticate our, our customers, but we have, uh, I have experience of uh, setting the OpenShift on Active Directory uh, on on-premise, and it's really easy to use. I, I was amazed, it works really well. Right, so with, with Azure AD, I think the only thing you need to do, uh, it's it's a matter of configuration, so that, that should work right out of the box. Um, there's no need to build anything, it's just a matter of creating the Azure AD application and giving it right to access uh, a particular directory where the users are. But that removes completely need to manage users and passwords. Okay, from... but uh, okay, is it available on Resource Manager or just classic deployment? Um, it is, you, you have to create the application separately from deployment. So all you have to provide in the deployment is the parameters the application, um, the tenant ID and the tenant secret in the config file, in the Ansible config file, and that should do it. I have a sample. Okay. If, if you want, I can show you. I actually have the active cluster hooked up to Azure AD. Okay, Without nice. It. Cool. That sounds okay. like something for a future OpenShift Commons briefing, Boris. Watch out. I will coerce you into sure. doing, yeah. doing that soon. So, Excuse me? I, I'm interested in, in AD2 uh, and how could I integrate this with my Django application? If you are going to talk to Diego, I'm, I would like to join, join you. Yeah, I think we'll make it a, a real, an OpenShift Commons community briefing because there's probably a lot of interest in that as well. So I will, I will hit, hit you up after this call, uh, Boris, and yeah. find a time That's for that. So, are there any other questions um, from the audience or from Mateus for the Ceph and Azure resources that we have here? Well, I, I would just like to have SD disks in Brazil. <laughs> I, <assume it's> possible. <laughs> I, I have two, two, or, two or three here on my desk. Can I? Send them to Sao Paulo data centers. They can install them on our machines. I will take a look to see when they're showing up in oh. Brazil. But that's uh, the it's okay. rolling out worldwide. Uh, by the way, okay. you also talk about your network issue. Do you, be sure you know. Do you you I'm sure you filed an incident and you should get an RCA for what happens. That's not expected behavior because of maintenance or anything else uh, from what from what you described. Okay. Okay. I will. Cool. All right. Well, it sounds like um, that's a wrap. What I'll do is I will make sure that um, the GetUp Cloud guys get all of the Azure guys and the Ceph guys email address so that you can talk amongst yourselves. And I will set up a future session, Boris, on um, Azure AD and other things related to setting up OpenShift on Azure because we're getting lots of calls and lots of interest in it. 
and we are really thrilled with the work um, and very impressed with the work that the GetUp Cloud team has done um, down there in Brazil. And we're really th looking forward to your launch, which we won't name any dates to hold you to. Um, and we'll figure out if um, we can have a party and, and have a Brazilian theme when you do that launch. So, um, and look forward to hearing more of your exploits. So thanks again, everybody, for joining us. And I will post this. And um, we'll get this all up on the internet very soon and share it with everyone else. Thanks, folks. Okay, again, thank I just you. very impressed thank with all the work you've done. That's really cool. Nice to see.